it's going to be Knight burying themselves in, oh, in this corner. <laughs> Potentially could be making their way over towards the hatch Why? now. This is now going to be a hatch race. Boosted needs to make sure that you can land these last couple of blinks. Otherwise, potentially this could be Knight getting out. You are going to see Boosted's going to do a <gasps> good. That was not what you wanted to do. That cool down here. Hey, what it do? What it do? YouTube, it's your boy Q. And in case y'all have been wondering where I've been here as of late, I've actually been casting a lot of different esports. You see, actually recently I got my Liquipedia page as a caster for Apex, thanks to my work in the pro scene in the Asian Pacific region. And not only that, I've actually recently started working in the Sub-Saharan African region for some RLCS events as well. So I'm still going to be doing some DVD casting and posting from time to time here on this YouTube page, just nowhere near as often as I once did. Otherwise, if you're wanting to keep up on my new channel to keep up with other esports outside of DVD for 2023, I'm going to go ahead and leave that link down in the description below. But a couple of weeks ago, I actually had the chance to get back on the desk for some DVD action for the grand finals for Dead by OCE. We got to see a very tight contested matchup between Blacklist and Neon. It was a best of five series that would indeed need all five sets. We would actually start with the nurse on the Wrecker's Yard, then be moving on to the artist on ARP, Blight on Cold Tower, Dredge on Midwich, and for the fifth and decisive set, we'd be going back to Wrecker's Yard for the Spirit. And I will have all those matches individually chaptered down in the description below in case you're looking for a particular game. Otherwise, if you do want to keep up with what Dead by OCE has coming in for the upcoming season, I'm going to have their Discord down in the description below. I'll also have their Twitch link down there as well, all right? But until we catch y'all back over here on the DVD channel or over on my new esports channel, don't forget, man, with everything crazy going on in the world today, be true, be you, be sincere, and game hard and love hard. All right, y'all? It's your boy Q, signing out. Now, as I was saying earlier, we do have a very special guest for these games. We have the one, the only, your boy Q. Yo, what it do, what it do. I'm excited to get down into it. We also get to get started right off the rip here with some nurse. I am all for it. How have you been, Smoker? Dude, honestly, I have been doing really, really well. The games in the tournament lately have been so, so exciting. And it's so awesome to have the opportunity to cast the last ones with you. I can't wait to get into it. I've definitely been trying to peep in where I can to peek into these maps. This definitely promises to be really good. It's uh, I'm going to be really interested to see how these first kind of chase goes. Obviously, with Wrecker's Yard, a little bit smaller of a map. Uh, so we're going to be really seeing these teams trying to make sure they focus these edge map chases early. I do like seeing a little bit more immersion early. We're already 45 seconds in, and Boosted here is yet to find a survivor. Yeah, no, with that corrupt, we have a good idea of knowing how long the trial has sort of started out and to not be able to find a survivor this early on, obviously, is going to be crucial. Oh, speaking of the devil, we, we know and love Caster's Curse, but Mark is going to be taking the first chase of the game here. Three drops, the pallet blink gets eaten, unfortunately, at that locker. That is really, really unfortunate. Going to be trying to keep the chase, though, going on to Mark, who is taking it over to the corrupt area which is exactly what you'd want to be doing on the survivor side here yeah i like the play here obviously now you see moving our way back towards this broken truck just the single uh blink here make sure we get those recharges back a little bit faster here for blues uh for boosted we still have a, a little bit of time oh. nice work around the firecracker here to still be able to get the down and I would say a little bit longer of a first down, but since it does look like our survivors were playing a little more immersed trying to wait out this grub, I doubt they have much progress into these gens. Oh, well, man, man, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you back, Q. It is so good. I never actually asked, how are you doing, man? Oh, been big chilling, man. Been staying super, super busy. Finally got my official Apex Liquidpedia page as a caster, so we've been big vibing, man. Yeah, look, I have a lot to be competing with here now after hearing how well you've been doing in the Apex area. I am really proud of you, but wow, what a hit onto Bam through that pallet, though. Goodness gracious. And a one blink as well to follow it up. A nice quick down onto Bam. That is really, really not going to be good for Neon. Really making up for that earlier part of the game where we saw not a lot of action. Took a long time to find our first survivor and get that initial hook onto Mark. But now with Bam on the hook as well, we've got our second fresh hook and our first gen's been completed. Are we going to see a second? 
I, I think the only problem here is now since our survivors have already kind of started this, uh, you know, the split up process, right? You had to go over, you had to get Mark up off the hook. Mark's yet to be healed, though. Something to keep in mind might mean you got some survivors trying to wrap up a last gen before they get pushed off here. But, I mean, you can see right away, Bam gets taken off that hook as well. So all four survivors are now going to be back in play and potentially starting to crack into these generators. This Call of Brian is also going to obviously come in for some big value, helps you with that regression. Also, with that little bit of potential information if our survivors aren't great about them skill checks. Yeah, now I'm not sure if we saw a sprint burst coming off from our Nancy here, pre-running from this gen here. I'm not too sure. We very commonly see sprint burst on our Deliverance player as well. Maybe we saw Nancy getting that unhook onto Mark earlier on, and this could be our Deliverance player taking this chase over at the top side of the map. Still being able to get that hit with just one blink. Might be able to follow up with a really nice quick down. The dead hunt comes Ooh. through misses because of the double back from knight absolutely lovely stuff and the lucky break as well making it hard to track but still gets the down coming out from boosted we did see some good skill checks being hit on that gent across the ways though so we might be seeing it pop before boosted can get back to it but i would not be shocked if we saw a deliverance coming out from knight at some point yeah, and I, I think even Boosted was trying to potentially expect that, right? You see, not even worried about the gen across the way. We know they're also on that second gen in that kind of back corner that Boosted's looking at. Now we had seen the uh, notifications from that Call of Brian earlier. And we are, of course, also now going to have that ability with where this hook is. You do still get to monitor a couple of gens. We're going to start that regression on this gen that's right next to us here, which will be nice. But I'm pretty sure Boosted's thinking the same thing that you're thinking here, Spoker. I think we're waiting for this deliverance. Yeah, no, I absolutely would not be surprised if that was the case. But we also do have a couple of gens around this hook here. We are going to be seeing that third gen getting done. Wait, no, here's the sprint burst on our Nia. Not going to be able to get the unhook. Oh, not quite getting the grab. Beautiful from Saint to avoid that from happening, Whoa. but still goes down here. I think at this point, we're going to be pretty understandable to know where our deliverance is going to be coming into play as saint is going to be going up on the hook here but knight is going to be able to escape and we aren't really going to be seeing any sort of tunnel out survivor getting eliminated earlier on into the trial as these fresh hooks have been spread out across the board yeah, and the fresh hooks are also going to be very important too because you've already got them all spread here right so you don't have to worry about them come end game now you can kind of focus on worrying about which survivor is going to be the first one that you try and get out here we do see the heal does come across on to Mark. Going to be interested to see if uh, Knight happens to get healed relatively soon here as well. Might be potentially having those survivors paired together. But since these last couple of hooks have all come over in this corner here, these gens are in a really tough spot. There's going to be that deliverance that we are waiting for. And you can see Boosted not worried about going back for the deliverance. Instead, wanting to spread that pressure here. Yeah, no, I think Boosted might have seen the same thing that I saw earlier, thinking maybe Knight was the one with Sprint Burst pre-leading that gen earlier on, leading into the potential play around Deliverance, but we do see it coming out from Saint, though, as all fresh hooks have been spread across the board. We know where our lucky break is as well, so we know that we can very easily track Bam to this bottom part of the map here, but it is just too far away from the three gen that we've established up at this top side of the map here and boosted is gonna head back and try and spot out some survivors here and maybe get some regression going now it's gonna be about trying to find these survivors not gonna be able to find anyone back here by this gen but of course once again that call of brian is gonna come into the value here potentially as long as our survivors are one, not going to touch that gen arc. Two, they have to make sure that they're paying attention once they do come in contact with gen, make sure they're hitting those grades, not giving away that location. We see that broken status now going to be going away, which means all four survivors going to be in the clear when it comes to the reset. You can hear this gen has quite a bit of progress. That fourth piston starting to have a little bit of motion to it, but you do still have a nice, decent four gen. More than likely this gen by the bus, though. That thing's going to go here relatively soon. You still have a nice three gen on this side of the map, though. Now, it is a little bit further away from our three gen, right? This gen over by the bus, but it's not a gen that you want to give away so easily while all four survivors are still mm -hmm. in the trial. Boosted's not really going to be able to catch out the resets as all our survivors are now healthy again. We know there's a survivor over in the, in the area here. This is Mark taking the chase here. Uh, one blink 
hit will mean that Boosted should be able to follow this up with a really nice chain of blinks, getting that down onto Mark. Now, does Boosted have enough time to get back over to the 3-gen and stop it from breaking as there is no real favorable place to hook Mark here? Yeah, this is that weird, like, give and take, right? Because you had seen originally Boosted was originally thinking about burying Mark basically in that far back hook, which then would require a survivor to need to go further away from any of the gens in order to get that survivor. The flip side, though, is obviously the time that it takes in order to go put that hook on, and yet bought just enough time. That little bit of hesitation, if they would have gone just straight to the hook that they originally, or that they initially ended up putting Mark on, instead of going to that back one, they might have actually been able to get over there and disrupt that gen. There it is. That's the fifth one. Wow. Mm, yeah, no, we definitely did expect to see that one popping. But having the three gen getting broken in Boosted's face is really, really unfortunate for Blacklist. But as the last gen pops, the haste's icon appears. And we know that Noid is going to be coming into play as Bam has been caught around the edge map here. All our survivors have been fresh talk, so there's no one specific survivor to go for here. A mess up of the blink is still gonna catch Bam off guard, and we are gonna get a slug onto Bam. Oh. Whether we see Boosted, we do see the lights on the door. The survivor does not have time to open that door. Boosted might be able to go and get a second slug here before Bam gets picked up and before the Noed gets cleansed. But this is night with the flashlight. There is nothing that Boost is gonna be able to do to stop that as it comes through. No blink for you. This is the time waste that Neon needs to get some more escapes. Yeah, this is going to oh. be big. Oh, and a beautiful dead heart there as well. Going to extend this chase more than likely. I would have oh. oh, able to bait out the swing and miss. You've got a player up on the opposite side. Bam's going to be up, which now means it's going to be Knight burying themselves in, oh, in this oh. corner. Potentially could be making their way over towards the hatch Why? now. This is now going to be a hatch race. Boosted needs to make sure that you can land these last couple of blinks. Otherwise, potentially this could be Knight getting out. You are going to see Boosted's going to do a good... <gasps> That was not what you wanted to do. That cooldown here should give the Nancy enough time to be able to get around the corner. Oh That's going to be Knight getting out via the hatch. That's huge. There is no way that that swing, that bait swing, to cause a little bit of extra fatigue so that Knight could actually make it over to the hatch. That's actually in. Insane. I can't believe that that's how that has happened. A four man out for Neon to finish off that first trial. Oh my goodness. It really sucks for Blacklist that the, those, hooks spread, those hook states were spread across the board with everyone getting fresh hooked. But that's going to be real, real tough for um, Blacklist to come back from on the survivor side. So let's see how Neon responds with their killer right after a short break. All right, let's go ahead and take another trip here back into the fog, back onto the Wrecker's Yard for some nurse action. Quite a stiff wind condition here. I mean, the good news is you got those fresh hooks spread all the way around. But otherwise, when you're looking at it here, um, th this is going to be tough. You've, you've got to, on the survivor side, you've got to limit out these hooks that you hand out. And uh, on Wrecker's Yard with the nurse, that's no small task, right, Spoker? Oh, 100%. It's, it's been really satisfying to see Nurse on Wrecker's Yard as opposed to just being put on Cold Tower or Dead Dog Saloon or something like that. Something that Nurse absolutely thrives on. Wrecker's Yard is a real challenge for Nurse, even though it's, it is smaller of the uh, Auto Haven maps. It still does have a big RNG factor to it with gen spawns and... Even the size of the map, as small as it is, there's still a good amount of distance between the objective here. So we are going to be spotting out some survivors a little earlier on here. Saint going to be able to start out an earlier chase here. And again, with the Corrupt Intervention pick as well to ensure that those gens don't get worked early on and boosted, taking the first chase of the trial. Our previous nurse player gets the first tag and... Oh, beautiful dead hard to save there will allow the chase to last a little bit longer and going back into the corrupt here oh my that was a very fast first chase here i mean the good news is you had a little bit of protection on those gens but obviously now at that first de uh, down those gens are now going to be able to be worked on we see saint is going to go ahead and carry boost it all the way over to this corner try and see if we can get a little bit of control on this map here early also wanted to point out I, that i might be a little bit out of touch here spoker but the the pop that's not usual anymore right i mean i'm gonna be real we have been seeing pop a lot especially
especially in both Academy and Division 1 in Dead by OCE. I feel like it's made a pretty big comeback here. So you are seeing quite a traditional comp build here with the corrupt, sloppy. Um, oh, sloppy, obviously, wasn't really meta for that long until it got reworked. But Noed, pop as well. That firecrack a little bit missed times there by Beanie, but is going to be taking a quick down here as well. We did get some good value from Pop here as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we were to get more value from it here as well. But yeah, no, Pop is back on the rise. I, I definitely love seeing I was going to say I do like the idea, especially if you're looking to see a little bit more of an aggressive gameplay. I mean, obviously, Saint, one of those names that's been known in the region for some time, right? Looking to come out, put that extra pressure out early. Now going to be a, seeing a second gen going to be getting that pop and getting big value. Both gens that we've kicked with it had quite a bit of progress, meaning we're really optimizing our value there. And even though we had talked about how maybe that spreading out the fresh hooks might have been a downfall in that first trial, we see Saint doing a good job keeping the pressure and even spreading out the hooks here. I really like seeing this gameplay. Mm, it is really impressive to see when a, a nurse game like this gets to a point where fresh hooks are what's happening as opposed to a tunnel out. Mm -hmm. happening obviously it's just big props to the survivors for allowing that not to happen and bassy with a beautiful sprinter is going to dodge out that hit there another fresh survivor mind you beautiful double back and a beamer as well but still gets hit through it didn't hold the beam up that is going to cost bassy so much being forced to go back to this active gen from before but should be fine here yeah, I think uh. Bazzi was worried was unfortunately at first with the the beamer not quite on the direction of the actual uh, body of the of Saint there. So I think was worried about not being able to get the full burn. So was trying to just avoid the swing anyways. But that's now going to be a third fresh hook. The good news for Saint here currently. This is now going to be a third application of the pop goes the weasel. This time going to be on a gen a little bit closer to that 40 45 percent mark but still only one gen done currently three fresh hooks right now saints in a really solid spot the question currently being is as far as i was gonna say where are the other gens currently you see a second one getting done but it is that far back corner so really if anything it just makes this map smaller for saint yeah at this oh, a beautiful deli coming out from bassy though as josh is gonna be taking the chase here though a really unfortunate second Blink, they're not going to be able to get that tag needed onto Joshi, but I think that Saint was going for a sort of play style. Beautiful tag to defend the gens over by the top side of the map here, because we do have what looks to be quite a strong 4 gen. We do also have Joshi jumping out of the locker a little bit too early there. We are going to get grabbed and put on a hook back a little bit closer inside the desired 3 gen here, but with Joshi on the hook here, it's really tough for Blacklist right now. All four fresh hooks have been acquired once again, except this time, one more stage will be the tight condition. Yeah, right now, these survivors really got to step up the pace, and it's not helping that Saints getting this extra help on these some big regressions on a couple of these kicks here. They really need to try and tighten up. Now, unfortunately, Bazzi's going to get found, still going to be injured, so... Makes it a very quick chase here. And Saint now going to be able to have another survivor back in this corner. Back on this corner of the map where you're still able to control this 3-gen. Uh, I, I think Saint might have the control that you need at this point. Because at, at this point, you need to get the rest of the gens done. Get out the door. And you can already see two injured survivors across the board. Saint doesn't look to be letting off the gas. Yeah, no, with that tag on to boost it though. And still being able to come back to get another application of pop on one of the most crucial gens at this point of the trial as well. It's just absolutely devastating. Reading boosted like an absolute book on that early breakaway and where they were going to pop, but a very, very quick reset as well. But Joshi getting caught here, doesn't go for the pallet and manages to avoid going down too early here. Bassi has been unhooked here. If Joshi goes down here, which he does, this will be the stages that Saint needed to beat the wind condition and with still two gens remaining. It still has plenty of time here. Now that means you've got plenty of time to start taking that wind out of the sails here. You can really start piling up the scoreboard in game number one. Remember these same survivors will be right back out here in our next set on the artist set. So if you can really flex here, 
really putting the pressure down going into set uh, set number two, that would be actually absolutely huge. I, I just want to quickly touch on, I think this gen has been popped about three separate yeah. times now. We've lost almost a full 60% of gen progress on just one gen entirely and a one blink onto boosted zoning them into a pretty bad part of the map as well is going to be really really unfortunate here what a prediction oh wow. my goodness absolutely insane saint playing out of their mind here that's going to be a fourth gen that pops here which is going to be a little bit of relief for the side of blacklist here but it's still a three gen that they're going to need to break you know what? This gen has a decent amount of pressure. Going to be coming over here. Able to interrupt this generator as well. But, I mean, you can hear this thing. That thing is just about ready to go. That thing's a knock and getting ready to get to pop. And you already see the unhook coming in here as well. Survivor's still showing a lot of fight, even though the results already come in. Yeah, what a real unfortunate miss onto Beanie over there, though. I don't know if Saint is going to go back to this gen over here, which is already so close as well. Didn't get to put the pop onto it, but I don't think it has as much progression as the gen that our Meg was working on. So I can understand why Saint would want to go back and push our Meg back off of it again. There she goes. This is a real tough spot for, you know, trying to get that 4K before all those gens get done. Just cannot touch that Megan over there. Really, really crazy stuff, though. It's insane how well Satan has been with his blinks this game. Just looking really good. Now we're still at that point with four survivors. They can still spread this pressure onto these generators. The only problem currently, as oh. you can see, yeah, in chase with an injured survivor. That's going to be boosted, found very quickly there. Put down to take a nap, and there's already a hook just right here for Boosted to go hang up on as well. We're now down to three. The question becomes on the side of Blacklist, are they going to be able to complete these gens? Oh, no. I don't think they're going to be able to cure it. Guess what? It's going to be. Pop goes the weasel coming back Sheesh. out. This has really just set this game in stone for Saint and a beautiful read of the double back. That final gen does get popped. No adrenaline on our Meg, unfortunately. Joshi was the one with adrenaline and Nancy as uh, Meg's going to go up on the hook here. Salt stage number two. No it is in play. Oh, we should be able doors. to see Blacklist. Yeah, look, this is this is some bassy doors right here and I'm sure he <laughs> can see it. But yeah, no, this is our No it totem spawning right between the doors as well it's gonna make the save quite unfavorable but they still get it yeah, they get the save here quick but this is gonna be tough you know you got two survivors over here by this door you got the other one right by the survivor that's in chase next to your noah totem i think we saw lights already getting lit up on this door across the way two lights on it so we're at least at 50 percent so they're getting relatively close the chase or the i mean the timer now going to be on here for saint to try and hunt down these last couple of kills before we see how many team or how many survivors blacklist get out here oh well <laughs> yeah no bassy was zoned into a absolutely terrible spot at the back of the map here but all of our survivors are dead hooked so we're only going to be seeing two stages getting out the door from blacklist side here as bassy is going to be joining boosted up with the entity but a big big ggs to neon for coming in yep. strong coming in from the uh from the losers bracket i believe and taking set point number one yeah, that's going to be big set in the tone because it's not just winning set number one, but you got four survivors out on your side and then you only allow two out on the other side with only a hook stage on either end. So you're looking at a total score of 39 to 26. I don't think the score obviously or really reflects just how close this matchup was. Of course, you know, the, the big play with the hatch there at the end of uh, set our game number one really kind of set the tone there. But if that shows us how close these two teams are, I'm excited to see how many sets this thing goes. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure everyone will be eager to see this go to five sets to see all three of the top killers being played because obviously these are the best of the best in OCE right now, our top two teams in the Division 1 bracket here. So we're going to be moving on to the artists on the Azarov's Wrecking Place, as Filthy would like to say, but we are going to go to ARP right after a short break. Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We are going to be seeing Neon on the killer side starting off set number two with the artist right after securing a set point against Blacklist here. So 
I'm sure Neon's going to be feeling really, really good right now. And again, we're going to be seeing Saint on the killer side, which, let me tell you, makes production so much nicer when we don't have to remake the lobby. But still, we're going to be loading in. Here we are. The Azeroth's resting place is looking just as for Jenny as it ever has uh. On the main building side, though, so at least it's not over on the shack side where we are going to be seeing our basement. So, again, it's not really going to be... Wait, have we got a 5 gen on main side? Yeah, I mean, when you combine that middle gen with it, it's a, it's a pretty disgusting Ooh. setup. You got four pretty well buried back. I mean, basically on that bus line and back as well for Saint when it comes to just the four gen here. So Saint going to have some good information. Obviously knows most of these players going to be over on this bottom side of the map. We can see that the locker is going to be used there to get rid of those birds relatively quickly. This first chase going to be very very important we can see that regina here looks like she should probably take the m1 probably didn't need to drop the pallet there that's going to be a resource not going to be able to be used later going to try and send those birds across the way finds a way to put themselves just in between the two uh sets sent their way yeah that's absolutely insane that regina was able to dodge that one out absolutely see it's always tough because we always know them as beanie right but he's always changing his name every bloody five minutes so i'm sorry i'm gonna call her vini but it's really it's up to you though q you can you can do whatever it's just sort of force a habit but unfortunately will be a bit of a quick down though corrupt will be expiring and the hook is gonna have to be on this shack side of the map here as saint is probably likely gonna be sending out some info crows towards the main building side or forcing stages here this wouldn't really be a good spot to force stages in my opinion as we mm -hmm. do have our gens mostly being on the main building side so let's see oh i'm thinking saint's hope was with the quick down that there wouldn't be much progress hopefully forcing a very quick save looks like that's going to be the case we can see that Beanie's going to be able to get away to safety here, but that's now going to be a second hook. Unfortunately, not going to be able to get any pain residence value as we, I think we saw that pop into play on that last play round. But now you've already been able to retrack down your injured survivor. This could spell trouble. The good news for our survivors, though, that first gen that did get done broke up the four gen. Yeah, no, exactly right. I believe we saw a gen near the main building getting completed so even the three gens that we're going to be seeing mm -hmm. on the main building side are still going to be a fair distance away but even then artist doesn't really struggle that much with it so long as they're on the same side of the map look how parallel they are you can still do a really good job at sending out crows and pushing people off of gens and maybe even getting cheeky cross map tags which we have seen in the past but these unhooks from blacklist are just so so quick sprinters on beanie as well as boosted is our unhooker here going back over to the shack side yeah i mean understandable why they would want to try and bring this aggro back to the side i do have to agree though a relatively quick save especially because that makes the decision here for saint to go for this tunnel out that much easier we see all the way back here at shack though that's gonna be a lot of space that is gonna be bought for our survivors here from blacklist currently sitting at only one gen done they need to really get to cracking on these things you are buying plenty of time at least currently here with the chase you can also see a second survivor going to be brought in here to try and at least create a little bit more of a nuisance it does look like those birds happen to get on the back survivors so they're keeping that pressure here bazzy doing a good job playing defense but now this is going to open up the way this should be easy down for saint here oh. wow i actually can't believe that saint did manage to get that down. I completely forgot that Shack Pallet had already been dropped. So getting caught in that vault animation is a bit of a pain. Now, I don't think there's any Scourge hooks available nearby. So Saint is going for the basement, which normally would be favorable, but it doesn't even matter because I just realized Beanie is now out of the trial. Yeah, I think your thought process is if you're already this close to the basement, you might as well take the little bit of additional time. Figuring that your three gen is going to be broken up. That way you don't have to be... Oh. Wow, they got two other gens down done on this side, which actually means their gen spread is going to be absolutely beautiful. Really going to be important to see how much progress is on that middle gen because now you can't be selective with your hooks here if you're Saint. So I think that was the thought process, but since you did take the time as far as on the tunnel out, that means only one other additional fresh hook currently. Saint needs to get to cracking. Wow, I can't believe Joshua was actually able to dodge out all of those crows. 
Joshi being the one with the flashlight here, not going to be able to have anyone get those crows off for him without going for a locker. So we are going to go to this tile here, but Joshi does manage to win it. And I I think that was a smash hit that we just saw. And if that was, I'm going to be so, so happy. But winning in those new tiles that got added to the auto haven realm is really, really not something that's easy to do, especially in the grand finals of Div 1. Yeah, we're seeing that right now. These survivors really showing out, putting up a good fight. I do got to worry, though, now we're gar we are going to be chasing down a survivor that is injured. We are going to see them going comp corner, trying to buy a little bit of additional time. But now becomes the point with three survivors, where as far as your objective work is going to be relatively minimized. You're going to need someone that needs to head over this way to get boosted up off of the hook. And also, Saints going to be looking for an additional chase as well. So even though they got those first three gen gens done relatively quickly, and even though they do have themselves a good gen spread here, it could work in their disadvantage because if they're across the map working on those gens, as we see right there, that's less time that they're going to be able to spend being effective as far as you know getting their resets and getting their saves. Now, I don't think Saint has the time to get that down onto Baz. He does manage to get the crows off before the next slot came out, but being forced at this part of the map here, Saint is going to opt to get the Call of Brian going on this gen here, which is so close to being completed. All our gens are in each corner of the map. It's actually crazy how Blacklist have managed to get this favorable endgame split going here. Crows onto Joshi, our unhooker from across the map. Bassi still trying to go in and pressure this gen. Saint not realizing that it hadn't been worked on yet and is still regressing. Bassi is going to be, I guess, taking the aggro around here, but needs to get as far away from that gen as possible. Now we're going to have to really see this chase going to be big. I'm not sure if, how I feel about this chase heading more towards the middle, knowing that it's more than likely heading towards the pair of survivors who are across the Ooh. way. I would imagine they're working on in gen since we haven't seen the reset coming in here, but Bazzi doing a great job. Oh, able to oh I thought was going to be able to dodge those birds. Nice job by Saint there to be able to establish the down. I do believe that this hook right here we had seen earlier was used for pain resonance, so going to get some value off of that here. The question is, which gen does that hit? And where are other two survivors? The reset still hasn't come in. So if you find boosted, that could be a quick chase. Oh, oh there it is. <laughs> Speak of the devil. We are going to be seeing boosted zoned to the backside of the shack here. It's just going to be so easy for Saint to just place that one crew there. But boosted, no, does the smarter play of just opting to get out of that situation as quickly as possible. Maybe even with, is this a balanced landing? We're seeing, oh, manages to dodge out that crow as well beautifully it's really awkward for blacklist though they have to take their chases as central to the map as possible as all of these gens are sort of in each corner so it sort of gives us an idea of which gens aren't being worked on as boosted is running over to this area of the top side bassy still on hook though we haven't seen joshi go in for the save yet and we get mm. oh no bassy is gonna be die on the hook here in an attempt to get gen number four complete but hopping off of the gen Getting that extra regression, it's not going to be enough. And now, Joshi being the only one up right now is going to be stuck back here with a very, very angry artist. Yeah, I mean, the good news for you right now is you could potentially try and buy some time for Boosted to try and find a corner of the map to go hide in. But the problem is, at this point, you're not going to be able to get any more gens done. What looked like on the side of Blacklist being super... <laughs> Oh, wow. I was going to say being super efficient. They're only going to end up with three gens here. So that's going to put a whole bunch of pressure on whoever ends up coming out here on the side of Blacklist on the artist needing to get the 4K. And they can't even play around a three gen. Yeah, no, this is going to be really, really tough. And I know it's been a while for you, Q, but in Dead by OC, I'm not too sure if you're familiar, but Bleedouts will award full points. So there's not really anything that Blacklist oh. can do in this scenario. So hiding, death is not an escape here. So Boosted is going to get caught here. Put on the hook as all 12 stages go to Saint 4K at 2. Man, that is that is a really impressive killer performance here from Saint. And I, to put this sort of performance up after coming out here and taking the first set, like... Oh, man, the, the amount of pressure being felt, I'm sure, on the side of Blacklist heading into the second game of the second set's got to be so immense. 
Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Absolutely impressive stuff from Saint here. But it's really going to be interesting to see if Blacklist are going to be able to come back from this. As it, this was their pick of Killer. So maybe they have some tricks up their sleeve that we just don't know about yet. But we will find out right after a quick break. All right, let's go ahead and take another trip here back into the fog. We appreciate the patience, y'all. Sometimes technology just does what technology does. Time to get back into this grand final, though, going back to the ARP. Got our second half of our second set here. Going to be seeing Blacklist on the killer, Neon on Survivor. And in case we have anybody who happened to miss the first game or, you know, it's been a minute. In case y'all don't remember the wind condition. Uh, pretty steep here, would you say, Spoker? Yeah, I feel like steep is a bit of an understatement when it comes <laughs> to artists on the ARP with 4K at 3. So three gens remaining, and the 4K has to happen in order for Blacklist to win this set point. Now, we can't completely write them off just yet, as they were the ones to pick this killer. So, as I was saying earlier, maybe they know something that we don't. We are going to find out as we load into this trial here. But I definitely, you know, after all the issues we've been going through just now, I am in high spirits for this trial. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see here because we even saw loading into the last game. I mean, you know, RNGs us a little bit on the side. This time I'm going to be seeing more of that typical ARP, that 3-1-3 setup here. So makes the task a little bit steeper here, but... You know, if there's, uh, if there's anyone who can do it, I, I think our artist is currently definitely one who uh, is going to be up for the task. I, I can't help but wonder, and while we wait for this first chase here, Spoker, I want to pick your brain a little bit. I know we were kind of anticipating this to be a really close contest. I want to ask, looking back at that first trial, do you think it was that last Ooh. second play as we see actually a nice hit through the window? Do you think it was the last second play to get the four out that's really given Neon the momentum that they've been able to ride high on? Honestly, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to agree Ooh, with you on, there, no but Neon aren't done yet. An amazing head-on play set up. Bassi never saw it coming with all the crows that were sent in the area, not knowing, but oh. still manages to follow through and get that down on to Bam Bam, which was very much so needed. A flashlight attempt was made, but not quite available, unfortunately. Now... It is quite unfortunate for Bassi though that we did see the corrupt being on the main building side of the map, which unlike all our other artists, we've had corrupt being on the shack side where our basement is making it a little bit more of a, you know, a little riskier flying high to the sun as to where you're going to be taking your chases, risking a basement hook early into the trial or not. But with this hook here, Bassi does have hop available, but I doubt we're going to be able to see that coming into play here as Bassi's definitely going to need to force a stage here and just hold this bottleneck as tight as possible. Yeah, it's a tough situation to be in too, right? Because you can only let a couple of gens go. Obviously, this first stage, only 60 seconds. Gens take a little bit longer than that. So, I mean, you still have some ability to put some pressure elsewhere. Obviously, also, depending on if you can get some shots, depending with these crows here, at least gives you a little bit of additional passive pressure on the gens. There's going to be the first one down. The question is, can Bazzi follow that up? Going to send a couple across the way here. None of those are going to be able to connect. So, Saint's still going to be holding on to those birds. We're about to be seeing... Another stage here shortly, but it looks like this squad already cranking in these gens. Yeah, no, I would not be shocked if we were seeing gens on the shack side getting completed here. Abassi not quite going to grid for that tag onto Saint there. Is instead going to try and force the elimination as quickly as possible as I don't think survivors have been able to rotate back in. But we do mm. see Nancy coming on in. We've got Knight and Saint coming in for the double save here. And he... Iframes onto the base oh, on the hook? Oh no. Oh, that is really tough here. So that now makes your decision a little bit tougher off the hook. We're really going to need a down here. I mean, we saw two gens already down. You need the 4K basically at this point if you want to walk away with the dub. Only going to allow one more gen if you want to at least uh, get the tie here. But we're now going to be taking Chase back here at the basement. Going to be seeing the pa Shack pallet thrown here. Buys a little bit of additional distance. Necessary distance nonetheless, especially with the Shack being over here. But now this Chase is going to be taken inside the area where you've already completed gens. This is the time that uh, we are going to need to see on the side of Neon. 
Yeah, and with two gens in total already being completed, the 4k has to happen before another gen gets done. Even though we're seeing some insane up chase here with Bassi, obviously knowing exactly what he's doing with these crow placements and just positioning in general. Getting that elimination onto Bam. This would be a great pace game if there wasn't such a steep win condition. And with that first elimination coming through, I'm not sure if Bassi is going to be able to make it back over before gen number three comes through. Now, to be fair, this is about where we were at in the first half of this set, right? I think we were at four hooks when the third gen popped. So uh, we know how momentum can change very quickly once it's down to a 3v1. The real question becomes, what other progress is on some of these? Oh, well, uh, awkward. Uh, I was going to say progress on these other gens <laughs> oh there, God. but... There, there it is. That's your fourth gen. That's going to be Neon walking away with a second set point. This is huge. This is absolutely crazy. 100%. And the fact that Knight had the disrespect to pop the gen in Bassi's face like that is just something else, man. Honestly, Knight's going to be going up on the hook for a fresh there. We might be able to see a couple more eliminations in this trial, but with only one gen remaining and having one on the main side, one in the mid, one on the shack side, they've split quite favorable for the survivors of Neon. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a fresh hook too, so you got plenty of hang time here. No NBA when we talk about Furcana and Saint to even just pair up on a gen, maybe even on that far gen across the way. We do see Bazzi did happen to send a couple of birds over there, didn't happen to get any to connect, so potentially located somewhere for a reset even, but... You can see Baz going to go ahead and, uh, <laughs> do you see what I did there? You can even see, oh my gosh, I didn't even mean to do that. Anyways, I uh, was walking over here to still close that distance. The save comes in. This is going to be a down back here by the basement, but, oh, a quick reset across the way too. Yeah, no, that was an insanely quick heal. Now, Saint doing that gen injured just makes me think that there's an adrenaline coming into play from it, but I'm not 100% certain on how the balancing differs from Academy to Division 1, so I'll have to double check that myself. But this gen obviously going to be the one with the most progress here, not going to get any value from Pain Residence either, as it is a basement hook. And these gens are just so far apart from each other, even though we are on the artist here who can do a really, really good job at sending out those info crows and and getting people off of gens, maybe even, you know, making people get magic skill checks that are, are impossible to hit and they just lose progression. But we all know how that goes. Yeah, we've all been there, right? That uh, inopportune skill check that pops up right as you happen to be hopping off a gen for some reason or the other. We are going to be seeing, though, that save does come across in the basement across the way. And knowing the location of two survivors, easy decision to go ahead and commit to this chase back here at main. You can also see the reset came in back over there at the unhook. So three injured survivors, or three healthy survivors, at least until the injured comes in across here tonight. And you'll see Knight now going to be trying to move in over to this other corner. I'm trying to remember what kind of tiles we had over here. Yeah, I don't think we have much to work with. This is a really tough part of the map to be going into. Yeah, at, like at this point, I can't believe Knight has actually been able to dodge out that crow at that window there and make so much distance back over to where this pallet is actually still in play. We didn't see it get dropped earlier. This is where Knight went down before and is actually going to opt to go for the corner map here and <laughs> not quite making a funny play at the tree there. Is going to go down again back on the hook, but I'm sure we are, after seeing Saint getting reset, going to be seeing them pop the gen over on the shack side. Yeah, so this is going to be another hook there, but there it is, that gen you were talking about. Now the question becomes as far as where are the doors, and I think are they both over here on the top side. This is going to be a little bit tougher of a situation here now at this point. I mean, obviously, wind conditions still coming across, but we are still going to be going into a set number three if the squad from Neon here can continue to build upon this momentum, get some outs here. That would be really big for him because, as you can see, both doors being on the side with this... Uh, hooked survivor over here already still pretty tough position to be in Yeah, we do spot out our other survivor going in for the save here. That is Kana getting the unhook I'm not sure if that crow is actually oh, it is gonna hit not gonna do a uh, oh, Wow, that actually just prompt killer instinct on both of them and not even Wow, that's actually crazy hills can be really 
really funky with the artist and that just really goes to show there we do see also a survivor working on the door towards the left hand side up at the top of main so it's a really really tough spot for bassi we know we probably have an injured survivor over here we have saint trying to go for this door here and is now just zoned to a point where they are going to go down but kana should be able to get the reset on tonight beautiful nice control shot. with the crows there to get that down onto saint you can see here, Bazzi not going to let up off the pressure here. We are going to get that killer instinct over here by the door. The question is how much progress is on it. Man, that thing was able to cruise. That thing is open. But you also see some scratch marks over here, which then becomes the question of what is the play? This is going to be another survivor over here. And this is an injured survivor as well, handing over potentially. Not only... Oh. Oh, I thought it was maybe going to be able to make a play on for around the uh, tree or if we had the other down survivor, if they might have been ready to get picked up. But that's now two survivors over here handing more momentum to Bazzi. And oh, oh, I thought we weren't going to be able to pick up the Claudette for a second. Mm, I'm sure that Kana should still be able to make yeah. it out the door here unless Bassi was to make some sort of insane play with a crow and just get a health state change. But it's just it's too close. So that uh, Kana is definitely going to be able to get out here. Unless, unless I believe. No. <laughs> well done by Kana to dodge that one out and get the out as well. Force the escape here. And Bassi's just going to go back and collect those stages, which a 3k with nine stages total. Still not a bad result for top, top level play on a map like ARP. So still really, really well done by Bassi for Blacklist here. Yeah, especially considering that Bazzi doesn't come in. He came in with the a build that was more set up for an early end game, trying to come in and play aggressive to meet that win condition, right? So it didn't really have anything to assist towards the back half once things got a little out of control. So still being able to walk away with this is going to be a good result. But now it's going to be up for them to try and pull the reverse sweep here. And I got to ask you, going into a question, uh, into a killer, like the Blight, that you know both of these teams are going to be really well versed on. What are you expecting to see, especially in this first trial, knowing that Blacklist needs to set the tone on the killer side? To be completely real with you, Q, I think out of all the sets we're going to be seeing in this in, in this best of five, sorry, I think Blight is easily going to be one of the sets that's just going to be the closest it ever will get. I reckon we're going to see Blacklist setting a pretty decent win condition, but it is just going to come down to the absolute wire because Neon is going to be playing for the match set points if they are to win that Blight set, and Blacklist have just got everything to lose. So I reckon it's going to be a real nail-biter. Yeah, I'm going to be really excited to see it here. I'm sure our players are going to want to get into this thing super quick after the technical difficulties. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the Blight on the Cold Tower right after this. Alrighty, welcome back, everyone. We are going to be loading into the Blight set, set number three of the grand finals of Division 1, where we're going to be seeing Blacklist on the killer side first in this set against the survivors of Neon, who have been performing absolutely insane tonight it's been a real struggle for blacklist to keep up with their gen pressure and here we're gonna be seeing bassy playing as the blight for uh for blacklist here sorry but yeah let's have a look at these gens shall we we see that bassy is rushing over towards the uh almost textbook three gen over around the main building here but the other gens are still fairly far away from the main building i wouldn't really say that it is the the most powerful top side as the other gens towards the bottom are pretty evenly split so you see bassy's gonna be trying to set up the main building here for later on yeah you know sometimes we joke about bassy having r and jesus on his side i think today almost having the uh you know karma sometimes pays itself off in the opposite side definitely not getting friendly <gasps> Uh, gen spread when you need it the most and especially here not going to be able to start off this chase with a hit which does allow this survivor to make it over here towards the shack and I, I gotta say as much as I uh, enjoy some comp throwing shack pallet at five jets come on man well it, it's just it had to happen you know I, I don't know what to say to that completely <laughs> how cheeky you can be on the desk and it's sort of a, a, a wake up to me like wow I'm casting with Q again. I don't have to be as professional. Let's go. But yeah. <laughs> Knight, once again, uh, taking upon the role of the chaser here. 
first chase of the trial is gonna oh my he is so handsome with how he plays that but unfortunately he does get a little caught on the tank tracks they do have a bit of a cheeky hitbox around them and knight will fall victim to it but the pallet respects there oh my goodness yeah, and the extra pallet respect, I mean, it's extra time. Even if it's two, three, five seconds, that's extra time for survivors split up across the way to be able to dig into at least that first generator. Gets the second Ooh. generator done so disrespectful in the face and able to fake at the window is... <gasps> what? Um, listen, we don't talk about it because I think Bazzy would have been able to get a free down there. Does want to come back here and check in on the hook. Understandably so, right? After losing those two gens, you'll want to get this player out as soon as possible and you're going to be seen here waiting out that borrowed time here that you get right off the hook even if it's not actually borrowed time now but y'all know what i mean but we're going to see now waiting that out still has the endurance status effect all the way over here that's going to extend this chase you're going to see now moving over towards the shack side should be able to get to another pallet before having to worry about going down this is a lot of time for bazzy that they can't afford to use oh that is really unfortunate i really like what bassy went for there instead of just mindless going through breaking the resources actually going for the flick around the pallet there as opposed to instantly breaking it really really nice stuff but knight is obviously caught between a rock and a hard place this is the edge map the bottom side of the cold tower ladies and gentlemen knight is going to be going down here even if there was a dead hard unavailable due to that bt hit but do get a call a brine kick onto this gen over around bottom side here Shut up. and oh my bam actually went for that um, yeah, went for it and also avoided the M1 as well. That's the important thing, right? You take the big mm -hmm. risk, but you still are able to get out of dodge in time to make sure that if you get into this next chase, which it does look like is going to be the case, you've still got two health states left here. Now we saw that third gen pop the pressure, gonna start popping up. You can see Seabaz here is trying to see if we can at least start to get a little bit more pressure on the side of health states over here on the survivors, but unable to do so. We see some scratch marks off in the distance, but not wanting to commit just quite yet. More want to make sure that we can cut them off. It looked like that was the Nia that's now going to be taking this chase around this jungle gym. And Bazzi, not going to be worried about going in there. I think still worried about this unhook. Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't really blame Bazzi for this. Oh, wait a minute. Do we have camaraderie on nine? as we all focus up aggressively and try and look at huh? the red bar there through all the pixels if i'm not mistaken that might I actually so, yeah. be a, a, a camaraderie or kinship mind you on night there and as that's the survivor that bassy was going for from the get-go that is just an absolute salt in the wound moment right there to have that sort of interaction you know i really feel bad for him and now that means that there's going to be plenty more time here. Now you really need to focus in on this tunnel out. You can see Bazzi on a mission. Going to be moving up here towards this top side of the map. That's going to be a fourth gen that pops. Ooh. Knight not going to be able to dodge around the corner. And that is going to be now a third hook stage here. That's going to be now to a 3v1. It's going to be really important for these survivors. How much progress is in that fifth gen we know that two of them are up here on this top side and you can hear that gens are rocking getting ready to get to popping these survivors are just about ready to attack the doors yeah now bass is going to go back for the kick as we do see another survivor lurking around the main building here we want to get that pop goes the weasel value here and then go straight back for mark oh never mind maybe go back to the gen a bit sort of test the waters see what our survivors are doing and Oh my goodness, we do have two survivors over here. Bam being the Beamer and Mark, who is still injured, is probably going to go down here. But a beautiful body block from Bam is going to stop that from happening. And an unfortunate double bounce. Not going to be able to secure that down. Mark and Bam are like a young couple. They always play so well together. The medium vault, though. I feel like Bassy definitely could have gotten it down there. But another third vault. Mark is now stuck inside Shaq. Can't vault that window anymore. And is probably going to go down here. But I'm curious. Is Bam still lurking around? As Bam lurking around, the other question too, you'll notice that we haven't gotten a notification from that call of Brian up at the corner. Of course, as I say it, there it is. That's going to be the last generator. Five gens done. This is going to be a fresh hook, so there's going to be plenty of time. Still left on the board to be able to attack these doors, but not just that. We are going to see that haste 
status here as well. So that means Bazzi going to be on a mission here, trying to find a couple of more downs. Yeah, no, I always, I, I always feel really weird about how no it on Blight really comes into play here, but it will be interesting to see if we do get some value here. We do have a survivor trying to open this door here. They do have Scrimper, so Saint is getting caught here, preemptively going into the locker, knowing that Noed is probably coming into play here. Now, Bam has to get that save and has to get it now. We did see him in position over on the Shack side earlier on, so he will be getting that unhook, but that could have turned into a really scary spot for Neon with a potential 4K being able to happen if Bassi can play this right. And you can see here this door over on this right side, over on what a lot of our comp players would call three. There isn't any progress on that. It's going to be a very fast unhook here as well. I would imagine the direction that Saint's going is either going to be trying to pull aggro or is hoping maybe to be able to set up for a potential hatch play. We do see, though, Bam Bam. We got to remember that's going to be another fresh hook. That would be a lot of points handed over to the side of Blacklist here. Neon has got to get over to this window for Bam Bam. Oh! Uh, listen, man, my, my boy Bazzy got some reach on him. He says not today. That's going to be a da down. We are going to see, though, both survivors are at the door. We're just going to go ahead and secure this. This is going to be three f stages, but uh, I mean, a really good performance from Neon here. Look, now it is a movement speed perk increase, and that's all it is. <laughs> no, it's really unfortunate that Bam got hit through that window, but it does leave a pretty... Pretty specific win condition here. We did get the 2k that Bazzi was desperately hoping for here with how stressful it was in the early game and just some of the decision making along the way. I don't really think there's much more that Bassi could have done to optimize that result. So we got three fresh hooks, sorry, and two kills leading it at seven stages, if I'm not mistaken. So I think we got all freshes, right? Oh, did we actually? Yeah, I think we got all fresh hooks two second stages. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, in that case... Well, it's what, really... both the second stages were kills, but you know what I mean? both of, There are two fresh hooks mm. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so really five stages out the door, if I'm not mistaken. So only three, three fresh hooks acquired, as I was saying earlier, right? No, four, four stages out the door. Both people who left were hooked once. Then oh, you got the two only, kills. It was only seven stages, wasn't it, Q? I think that was before the, the sacrifice came across, wasn't it? Ah. All right, well, have a look at the score. I don't have the score sheet open at the moment, but you guys will know. But we'll find out what happens right after a short break. All right, let's go ahead and take another trip back into the fog here, back on the cold tower, and it is going to be up to Saint here. We could potentially be seeing our last trial of our grand final here and we're sitting at that win condition i think we discussed uh we figured out in the break right around that nine hook stages you got all freshes uh were acquired in the last trial here so relatively attainable i i would say but it definitely isn't going to be easy on the side of saint yeah no knowing that all four fresh hooks will most likely need to be acquired and with our blights opting to take the noed pick as well i feel like are expecting to uh, have all the gens getting completed in these games, especially on the coal tower. Beautiful pallet drop there by uh, Michaela that is boosted in the first chase of the trial here. A very unfortunate double bounce, but Saint will still get the pallet break, and we're going to be taking the chase. We do have a fourth gen up around closer to the main building than we saw in the last game, so a little bit better RNG for Saint here. And Boosted got this Paladin to work with, but we'll be taking the M1 and we'll have to deal with all five rushes. And here we go. We can see this is going to be working around the long wall. TNL actually opted not even to worry about that. Mm. That is going to be an endurance hit, which means now we're going to have a little bit more time with this chase. That's going to be generator number one. Get stunned, stupid, plus 10 wood added to the face. As we can see, this chase continues to get uh, taken. Boosted trying to see if they can prolong it even longer. This is going to be a very good first chase here for the side of Blacklist. Yeah, this is exactly what Blacklist needs right now. Saint needs to make the decision of whether to commit to this chase or not, as it is in the main building around where all our corrupt gens are. And we still have all of these resources around. It's very difficult to win here, but... Oh, oh my goodness! Boosted! 
managing to win at the pallet there. Gets the pallet break on Saints then, but still being able to prolong this first chase. Getting that fast fault at the window as well. I don't think there is a pallet in this tile. Who needs a pallet when you can just serve the juice here? Oh. Boost is going to be able to bait out another swing and miss. We were able to get out the entirety of the corrupt intervention here. That's a second gen getting popped along the way. We know they've been in this trial for more than two minutes. Don't be surprised if we see a third gen popping relatively soon. We can even hear this gen that's in the middle. That thing's got a bunch of progress here. And now Saint in a tough spot. Yeah, no, the pressure that we're seeing from Blacklist on these gens right now is absolutely insane. Even getting the gen close to the main building, so close to completion as well, is just absolutely insane. Oh my goodness, nice hit onto Bassi as well. I thought for a minute that was boosted in chase again, but we still have our survivors pressuring this crucial gen that will need to be completed sooner rather than later if Blacklist want to have a favorable mid game slash end game. Yeah, now the good news is with this pressure that the way they keep sending at this mid-gen, you can see obviously it's being a priority, so it is keeping our Blight in the middle of the map. We've seen our survivors, once they get those tags, they head edge map. We've already seen one reset come in, so our survivors doing a good job with their rotations, doing a good job with their communications there as well. That's going to be a gen that does pop down on that sixth side of the map. So now we're locked into our four gens that are in the mid and the top side task gets a little bit tougher here for blacklist but they've got plenty of stages to spare and they're doing an insane job at being able to whack out these resets as well as we've got bassy boosted both healthy as well and all four of our survivors getting fully healed saint not quite being able to catch up that reset but we do get that tag on to boost that that gen is just mere seconds away from being completed. We still have this drops pallet from earlier to work with, but Boosted does eventually lose the mind game, unfortunately. We are gonna get hook number one for this trial, but three gens have already been completed with a fourth potentially popping right about now. Yeah, and we do see that uh, notification on that mid-gen here, so you can't help but wonder, is there one player, is there two players that are attacking this gen? This unhook needs to come in here quick because that's going to be big now here. We didn't even really discuss that. With this now, at this point, if you can continue accumulating hooks with this 4-gen over on this side of the map, not only can you apply that Call of Brine that we've seen throughout the course today, but also the pop allows you to get some big value, but... You can see the survivors doing a very, very good job. Continue to rotate back in, getting touches on that gen, making sure that the regression isn't able to really set in on this mid gen. The other thing that it's doing is it keeps the focus on the middle gen and potentially one of these far corner gens is getting attacked right now as well. I would really hope so. We are still seeing these resets being so consistently pumped down here. We do see, I believe, Bassi working on this gen up close towards the top side. Tries to go for a cheeky double back, but still gets tagged. Regardless, Saint is doing an insane job at trying to get these tags and get moving. But Bassi is doing the smartest thing possible here, going back up towards the shack side, taking the down, which was very much so inevitable. Not really anything to work with here as Gen number four has been completed, actually. Yeah, and that mid gen still also being up too. We know that there's a bunch of progress on that. The question, though, is what kind of touches have been on the gen? Because we haven't seen any sound notifications. So have they only tapped it or they've actually been hitting them great skill checks? Regardless, though, we are going to see a broken status across the way on the unhook. Pop goes the weasel going to be on this mid gen as well. So you still have a decent three gen up here. But one of those gens is that top mid gen requires, especially a blight that need to at least check that big old booty up there and oh. try and figure it out. That's going to be a big miss here as well, which is going to buy plenty more time for our other healthy survivors to attack the gens. So Saint was obviously trying to dodge out the dead hub that we have seen on Boosted earlier, but that actually cost him getting the down all together, as now Joshi is going to be the one in chase here. We have a healthy survivor taking the aggro away from that one generator. You'd think at this point, maybe Blacklist would have someone either dedicated to the resets or maybe even working on either main building or one of the other gens. Oh yeah, that thing's exactly knocking. what Saint is checking up on. We do hear a lot of progress on the main building here. 
Yeah, I was going to say, when you were starting to mention it, I wouldn't be surprised if they're working up here. You can see fourth piston, little bit of progress to it. Not too much, though. So we're right around that 75, 80% marker. We are going to get a little, little bit of regression thanks to that call of Brian. The problem being right now for Saint is now all four survivors are reset. So these next chase needs to be a very critical moment for Saint because you know that the survivors are going to be trying to pull this aggro back towards the bottom of the map. You can't afford to continue to allow them to reset. You need some hooks. Oh, oy, oy, oy. wow. Benny playing that really well, but is going to go down, unfortunately, at the shack here. We do get a skill check miss on that one gen that has been absolutely cranking for the duration of this trial here. Not a call of Brian notification, but that little bit of regression might actually cost Blacklist. They are pre-leaving it. They're not going to be able to get a complete in time, and it's just going to get Pop Goes the Weasel once again. But with all of our survivors healthy and a survivor already in position for that unhook onto Beanie, it's, this is just really, really tough for Saint to have to juggle back and forth. Yeah, I was going to say, though, even that middle gen got the Pop Goes the Weasel. His top gen still has a decent amount of progress. You can see, though, just the strength of that call of Brian, right? It only got a call of Brian kick before, and whereas it did have a little bit of motion on the fourth piston, that thing's now back down below that 50% here, and our survivors did get a full reset, so they're back to the point where they're back at full strength. But we have to remember, the longer this game goes, Saints should be able to start getting these last couple of resources that are on the map out of the way. Could help them here, but... I still feel like it's going to be hard for Neon to, to limit the amount of, or it, it, I don't know if Neon can accumulate the hook stages here. It's going to be tough. Beautiful tag yeah, on to boost it that. though, but gen number five, I'm not even sure which gen was the one that just got completed, but no, it is going to be coming into play now. This is what Saint needs to make any sort of comeback here. Bassi making a very smart play of hopping into the locker here. Let's have a quick look at where our doors are. We have one all the way over by Shaq. So Saint is immediately going to go and run over to our Noed totem also being there as well. I wouldn't be surprised if our survivors are able to see the aura of it. And Saint is going to catch out. I, I believe that's boosted as well. Injured survivor could have gotten the, uh, the down. Oh, okay. I don't know what universe boosted would have pre-dropped. That Shaq palette, a little audacious by Saint there, but the pickup has already happened onto Bassi. We do currently only have three hooks onto Wow. Oh, that dead heart has just got me absolutely flabbergasted. Booster doing an absolutely insane job here for Blacklist, and that's the door open. Yeah, I know, I know it hurts the killer mains to hear the words nice dead heart, but that was absolutely huge. Bought the time uh, for the rest of the squad to be able to get out there. You saw Boosted was close to being able to make a play for the hatch. Is going to end up going up on a hook. Ends up getting sacrificed to the entity. But Blacklist doing enough here, getting enough stages out the door that we are going to be going to Midwitch for some dredge. And I remember back before we were, when we were talking about the killer selection, we had quite a few people in chat who are excited for that, and I'm pretty sure you were as well, Spoker. Oh, you already know it. I'm just so curious, so eager to see how this dredge set is going to play out. We saw that Neon were the ones to pick this killer, and it really is just going to be so interesting. It's nice to have a wild card in, mm -hmm. in a roster of killers, especially in the middle of a grand final where everything is on the line here. So Blacklist still in the game, getting a set point over Neon in the blight set. We'll be with you right after a short break. All right. Hopes are high for Blacklist right now. They are still down two set points to one. But as we go into the dredge set, things could get real spooky as we head into Midwich Elementary School. Elementary School? Or is, am I just thinking about him? I don't know. But Mark is going to be taking up the dredge here and... I'm not really too familiar with add-ons for Dredge, but being in Nightfall at the start of the trial is definitely a very nice thing. Yeah, so the purple one that we have there, that's going to be that field record. That's what you were talking about with the uh, starting off in Nightfall. We're already seeing trying to get into an early chase. Uh, you know, I, I do got to say with this map, a little bit tougher of a map to uh, navigate around while in that Nightfall here. We are going to see, though, has the window available, able to move into this next room. That is going to cause Festive Mark here to you know, have to break this door down. Buys a little bit of additional time, but this first chase 
Already taking a little bit of additional time here. We're sitting around that 45 second marker. There's going to be the first hit coming in. Does get a health state change. The other thing that we're going to see is that broken doll. That's the green add on. That's part of the reason that we're seeing the prolonged uh, darkness. Nightfall is 20 seconds longer with it. Oh, wow. That's actually quite brutal here. Joshi is going to get caught out by the. Uh anti-loop mechanic of the dredge here really unfortunate though i feel like joshi could have played it a bit safer at that pallet there would have been a really really nice chase to start off the start of the trial nearly the full duration of the nightfall now mark is just going to be able to still maybe get a teleport off before the nightfall ends at a higher speed he's going to be able to go up into this corner though we do see a first gen does get completed here, but it does sound from at least this corner's gen, so that's about all the progress. More than likely, this is less there's one additional gen in that opposite side, but we know the chase kind of took place over on this top side over here, so there's kind of that passive pressure over on these generators. And I think at this point, with where this hook stage is, we're just going to see a second stage force. Yeah, no, it absolutely wouldn't shock me at all. Now, I quickly want to touch on as well, it's so nice to see Dragon's Grip potentially coming into play as I'm sure a lot of comp players are conditioned into tapping a Call of Brian Gen before it regresses too much and just assuming, you know, that a killer does have Call of Brian. Now, I'm not too sure about this though. I feel like Joshi could very easily communicate to the team here that the Remnant is by the hook here as we have Bassi trying to come in for the save. The second stage does eventually go through here and things are looking a little tough for blacklist right now but hopefully they have the gen pressure to make up for it yeah we do see here now at this point bad going to be taking this chase going to be trying to pull his aggro away from the hook mark not for it though going to continue to well oh i thought it was gonna stay on the lower floor because we we're gonna go back and check in on the hook this is actually because bazzy decided to head back down here there's gonna be the unhook coming in across oh. the way this is gonna be one of those plays i do want to point out especially as we see mark heading back the opposite way. There was a for the people that came in, but was it worth? I feel like we probably could have seen a full heal, right? I'm only going to disagree because of what we just saw Mark do. Dredge having the ability to get back to wherever at a somewhat decent pace. It is kind of slow outside of Nightfall to go for that teleport, but with the survivor off hook and being able to teleport to those lockers again, I feel like Dredge just does have the mobility to shut that heal down, especially when Sloppy Butcher comes into play and Beanie gets out mind games at the pallet here and goes down. This is our for the people user. This does look like it is going to result in a basement hook. We are going to see Beanie paying for their sins and it's going to be tough to be able to get a uh, save from down here. There's going to be a third gen. It does get popped off across the way, so we do know that our survivors right now doing a fantastic job as far as their progress. Stuck in the locker here is Mark for how long is the progress of getting out of there, but you did come to the right area. You found yourself an injured Bazzi. You do have a downs pallet to be able to play around, but that's not much here. I do believe this is going to be Bazzi eventually going down. I don't know if you make it over here. Ooh. And even though you're acquiring some hook stages, you need to get that basement save like right now, man. Yeah, especially now that Nightfall has just come into play as well. Mark would be able to teleport over there really, really quickly, but Blacklist have done a good job at uh, assessing the issue here and getting that out of the way as Mark now teleports right over to this gen here in the chemistry lab. Doesn't really have a whole lot of progress though, but we'll get the kick onto it. Hopefully we don't see Dragon's Grip getting wasted and revealed to the survivors too early on a gen with that little progress, but maybe that's exactly what Mark wants. Who knows? Yeah, I think maybe the other thought would be if someone comes along to a gen that they haven't really seen, they might not have a second thought. You saw it was very minimal progress, so it could even be sitting on zero progress. So could be a nice little surprise. We haven't seen anything proc for it across the way just quite yet. I would assume, yeah, that's going to be a sprint burst to be able to build a little bit of additional distance here for our survivor. Uh, getting caught up there, that's going to be the unfortunate side effect of Nightfall. Yeah, no, not really be able to see the, the benches and stuff along the edges of the walls on mid, which can be a bit devastating, but I think Joshi will be able to make it to this pallet, but does panic vault it, unfortunately, which uh, I believe Joshi has already been hooked before, if I'm not mistaken, so at least we're not giving up fresh hooks at this point in the trial, which Blacklist is going to want to try and hold on to as much as possible. This is actually going to be an elimination act. Mm -hmm. I am eating my words right now. 
Yeah, really tough situation because now you are into a 3v1. Anyone who's played Dead by Daylight knows just how quickly the tides turn once you are down to just three survivors. Once again, going to be seeing that Dragon's Grip applied to a generator that doesn't have very much progress. Could still be used as a nice surprise. At this point, the Dragon's Grip hasn't been exposed, so could still be a nice little tide turner but there's the fourth gen now getting the uh getting completed right, right now on the side of blacklist they're really doing a good job of cranking these things out yeah and we're just about to see dragon's grip go to its last couple of seconds here no it's gonna be true here boosted does oh. get injured we see the last gen actually getting complete Bazzy with an adrenaline to get back to full health again now midwitch does have some pretty disgusting Doors that will always spawn. You always know where they're going to be. We do have a survivor over by this door here, and it's just going to get hit for free here. Eventually, we uh, can going to be seeing the other door getting open wow. already as well. Bassy taking the hit, getting caught on the hospital bed here. We're going to need to see Meg giving Michaela a quick reset and then some bodies to that door. If anything's going to happen from this, Bassy being forced back the opposite way away from that door. Really nice by Mark here. But I think it's still yeah, possible middle. for a three out to happen here. Yeah, this could be tough though, because you do have, you know, the blocker right there, which gives you a cutoff point. So you can see now at this point, Beanie's been able to move in, able to apply an additional body, but now you've got all these lockers, so much movement. Both of these survivors Ooh. caught out here. I would imagine we've tried to switch out survivors here, because I do believe Beanie has already been hooked. I believe we're trying to keep boosted away from the hook, because boosted would be a fresh that's the survivor that would give the most points over to mark you can see here this door yet to be open is going to be able to make this window here but now this is time for beanie to potentially get picked up and still leave the door as well so right now mark feeling the pressure but right now the survivors really showing a good fight oh oh no bassy with a misplay there with a, only a medium through that window that would have been absolutely crucial we do see the pickup happening onto beanie though beanie and boosted should both be able to get out here bassy uh... being the one to take the down here we're out of nightfall so can't quite tell what over quick enough the door is uh, the door is open they actually go for the unhook i i feel like that they're trying to still play for the three out here but with beanie getting caught and the outskirts here mark does have to slow it down a bit and bassy absolutely walking what into are the you doing face here. And he makes oh, the pallet. It's oh not my so goodness. Bad. Oh, that was so huge. That gives them the door. Now it's going to be up to Mark needing to make a play. Coming out of this locker, the question is, is there anyone around? Drops down. Going to be watching the other two out. And that's going to be the three out here from Blacklist. What? I can't believe it. I felt like Blacklist was getting a little greedy trying to play for that three-man escape with how well Mark was being able to teleport around in power to just zone the survivors completely from the already open door. But Blacklist still somehow managing to pull it out and get that three-man out. It's going to leave the scores right now. It's 16 to Blacklist and 14 to Neon. So only a two-point difference going in to Blacklist's turn on the killer side for this chance. So this is going to be absolutely nuts and i can't wait to see how this one gets played out so we'll be right back after a short break sorry q i love you babe all right let's go ahead and take another trip here back into the fog we're going back to midwich here gonna be seeing some dredge action and it's going to be all up to the killer here for blacklist to try to extend our grand final here to a fifth and decisive series it's going to be Still a pretty tough task. We did see, though, from the survivors of Blacklist, they were able to get three out, uh, three out, were able to get quite a few stages out the door as well. Most importantly, they were able to get a fresh out. So the, the task right now for the uh, the, the killer is, is still pretty tough. Oh, yeah, 100%. And after such an amazing dredge game that we just saw, which uh, I'm not going to lie, I might have been cheeky. What live seeing that three-man escape from blacklist now seeing them on the killer side it is really just all down to the wire now blacklist obviously playing for their life here as they're already down two sets we're gonna be seeing bam taking the chase 
behind the clock tower here and does fall for the mind game here. Will get hit fairly. Uh, oh, the nightfall has still progressed quite a bit. I don't think we have any add-ons that increase the duration of the nightfall here. But I'm I'm gonna let Q take over here because I'm not too sure what that yellow skull does. What yeah, could so that the mean? yellow skull just helps charge up the uh, meter a little bit quicker. So you're there trying to get into nightfall a little bit more often without it being the prolonged nightfall. So it increases mm. the charge rate um, for when survivors are injured by 66% per second. So we'll see, especially now if we can spread that pressure, which is gonna be something for our killer here to really try and focus on. I would imagine with that add-on, you can get quite a bit of value in being in that nightfall. Again, not for prolonged periods of time, but quite often. So it's gonna be really important for our survivors to try and go for the reset. There is gonna be the first gen that comes in there and we can see doing a good job. I don't think you make oh. that fault though, unfortunately. And that's going to be another down. I feel well, like this is, uh, yeah, no, I feel like this is fairly similar to the pace that we saw for the last Dredge game, though, where we had our first down and first hook around as the first gen pops. But I think Neon being able to get that first gen popping a little quicker than Blacklist was able to. So let's see what other kind of gen pressure we're going to be seeing going on here. And also, a Ooh. blast mine is going to be coming out, apparently, but also a Nomad pick here instead of the Dragon's Grip. I think might actually help Beanie out a lot here in the end game if it comes to it. You see here, gonna be trying to use that teleport very quickly, checking in on this hook here. No one's going to be around just quite yet. And now probably going to be pretty well forced to second, uh, forced to kind of just monitor this and forced to a second stage. We can already see the notification that they're on that gen up top. I think was just trying to potentially bait them out by showing that they're going to teleport, but you can see very committed to the second stage here. And I just want to quickly note as well, these lockers, there are some lockers that are fairly close to the hook here. If Feeny does actually decide to teleport to this gen that's being worked on just up above him here, he could teleport back and forth and potentially bait out someone coming in for the unhook here. We do get Mark getting the save onto Bam. Once again, being there for his buddy, but he's going to be going up on the hook here. We weren't able to get the second stage onto Bam, though, so Mark did his job well. And there it is. We know that that Nightfall getting ready here. And now you guys try and see if you can make a play with it. Coming through the locker, able to find a survivor. There's a pallet available, available over here, though. We also see a very quick unhook. Plus 10 wood added to the face here. Also going to go ahead and apply the life because it is indeed life. And you can see now going to be moving to another pallet space. Not the most safe of pallets, but able to bait out the swing and miss. That's going to build a little bit of additional distance here. Yeah, no, that's really... Really nice. I believe that was Kana that managed to win at that pallet there. Commonly a very, very unsafe pallet for Midwitch, but getting that distance and getting away, we're now going to be seeing the chase going back onto Kana. He's <laughs> going to be caught out at a different spot here, down to the bottom parts of Midwitch here. Trying to cut him off here with the locker here. The killer instinct will be able to give it away, and Kana is going to get absolutely caught by surprise with that. This is the duality of Dredge. You can still catch out some of the strongest survivors with how you play your power. And this is one of those things here. We know that the survivors did reset, so that means that there's a little bit less time spent as far as on the generator. So right now, doing a very good job applying some pressure. You're going to be able to only have one gen given up here for three hook stages. That's definitely the start that you're looking for here on the killer side. You're also going to be able to get a tag on to Mark. There's going to be the unhook across the way on to Kana, however. But I think at this point, you're going to be okay with just continuing the chase does allow for a little bit of additional distance here though just by making sure that we stop and break for the uh not only the call of brian but to break the door as well it does however still zone mark into this backside so mark's gonna be in a tough spot hit taken though here by the ace bam bam that prolongs this chase it's always so nice to see mark and bam playing so well together, being able to take bodies in chase like we just saw. Saint and Kana being the only healthy survivors here right now. Is Bam going to get caught out by it? Fakes out the pallet vault. Beanie swings for it, and Bam is not going to be able to make it to this win. Beanie will get the down here. We've got three of the four fresh hooks here right now as uh, Beanie is going to get the second hook stage onto Mark here. Sorry, I thought that was Bam in chase. My apologies, but look at these mid-witch hook spots. Not a single hook 
in this corridor and Beanie's not even going to be able to get it. Has to go around and pressure Jens. Yeah, this is oh. tough because we see a couple of gens getting popped here as well. So, I mean, the good news for you, at least for now, Nightfall going to kick in. So if you need to teleport around the map, going to be able to do that just a hair bit quicker here. You do also still have Bam injured as well. So there is still that potential lurking in the shadows here. And one other thing that is worth noting is if they happen to go through those, uh, like the... Whatever, what, what do they call this thing that when he puts that down? Like the little, the, the, uh, the, 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 the remnants. remnants. Um, because of that purple add-on, they do get suffer. They do suffer the exhaustion status. So that's one thing that might be able to work when you're in some of these smaller chases. You don't have to worry about, let's <gasps> say, the lives and things that we've seen in the past. But this is going to result still into a down here onto Saint. You see plenty of survivors around though. Yeah, and with Saint going down here and getting put into oh. the basement, this will be the final fresh hook acquired here which i think is exactly what beanie needs i don't think we saw mark being able to get all four fresh hooks from the last game i could very well be wrong these games are just so intense it is a little hard to keep track with everything here but i think this is not the worst decision here from beanie to want to force a second stage here and now at this point with the basement i mean it, it be... <sighs> Your, your gens are so far away. There's a fourth gen popping here now, too. I mean, you can understand why you would want to secure the stage, but you still need some hook stages here. I I, I feel like the bait is securing the stage here isn't the move. I, I don't know. What about you, Spoker? Uh, well, I, I honestly don't really know without knowing, obviously, how much time that uh, Neon's been able to spend on the gens here, which might not be as much as we think as we're seeing resets onto Mark here and potentially Bam as well. But this is a really oppressive spot for Beanie to be in right now. We do see a survivor who is also trying to go for the unhook here. I think our survivor has been prioritizing health here as opposed to gen pressure as gen number four came through. So our last gen might still be a fair while away. And still after that, we're going to have Noid coming into play as well. So I think I think with that being said, this is the perfect thing for Beanie to be doing right now. Yeah, my quick math, I was just looking at it as well. Because you've gotten all of the fresh hooks, actually, they need to get the save from the basement. Because if this is a sacrifice here, because of how the rest of the hook stage has worked out, I believe this sacrifice would already bring us to the win con, if I'm not mistaken, here for Blacklist. Really? Wow. Yeah, because you had the fresh out on boosted. So even though you had a second stage on oh. somebody, it's the point. So we're going to be seeing the two players coming in here for the save. The only problem, though, is now everybody is injured. And I'm pretty sure. <gasps> even oh. If, oh, wait a minute, though. Things get interesting oh. in a flash, man. Oh, no. You're going to be able to get a little bit of additional distance off of that. The only problem, though, now the knife. Oh, oh. my goodness. The last gen gets done. We're going to be seeing some adrenaline across the way onto Bam, but Mark still going to be in, a, uh, in between a rock and a hard place here. Yeah, no. Our survivors can't give any more sages to our killer here. Otherwise, they will. The victory for Blacklist, though, as we are going to be seeing, I believe this is Mark and Chase here, does get caught at the pallet space here. Is this enough for Blacklist to take this set point? I'm not too yeah. sure, but wow. Basically, the only difference between the result now and the result from last game would be that additional fresh hook. So um, that that's going to be the result here. I think even if they were to get the save, it still wouldn't be enough. So we should probably just see them taking the three out here in spoker that means we're gonna be going to wrecker's yard for some spirit i can't believe that blacklist have actually been able to pull this back and just barely get set point number two against neon with again neon's own pick of killer we've seen both teams being able to get you know victories in their opposing team's killer pick so it's really really interesting to see and and how are you feeling about going into this last set, Q? Oh, you know what? If, if we're in a grand final, we might as well go all the way down to the wire. This is what we showed up for, for some competitive DBD action. I'm all for it. I can't wait to get to some Wreckers Yard. We've got spirit. Yes, we do. We'll be back here in just a couple of minutes. All right. It actually all comes down to this. After two sets of Blacklist being down, two sets to nil. Then to one, it's now two sets all, and we're going to be seeing Spirit on the Wrecker's Yard with Phantom representing Blacklist here on the Spirit on the Wrecker's Yard. 
How you feeling about this, Q? I am oh, bloody excited. I am excited. I love Spirit on Wrecker's Yard. It really forces a lot of, I mean, obviously with it being a little bit more mobility on the killer, obviously it's not quite a blight or anything like that, but the ability to traverse the map really mm -hmm. stresses the importance of communication and rotations from the sides of our survivors. Of course, the other thing too is you got to be worried about which um, resources you throw early. You don't want to be getting rid of too many of the resources in the middle of the map that you may need to avoid a basement hook in that mid game. Oh, we're going to be catching out Tanner trying to work on the hill gen near the shack here and probably going to be taking the chase, sorry, over towards active generators here. The corrupt is a bit split towards the bottom and the left hand side of the map here, but we are going to be Don't seeing do that it. Oh. getting out of the way at five gens, much to Q's dismay. Unfortunately, that's just what happens in comp tough bickies, mate. It just hurts the soul just a little bit. It's okay though, definitely understandable, especially on a map like this where there's only one place for the basement to be. But we're now 75 seconds into this trial. Mm. Get stunned, stupid, plus 10 wood added to the face here. As we do see, we're still yet to see a health state change. We're at 90 seconds almost into this trial. Our survivors have had time to be able to start attacking these gens that are uncovered by the corrupt intervention. And here in just 30 seconds, if there's no down, those gens are gonna be able to be worked on as well. Well, Spoker. Oh my goodness, Saint almost seamlessly pulling off a chase here at this pallet does get tagged and running back over towards the shack side now. Our corrupt is about to expire, whether it be by the down or by oh. the timer running out, but Saint does go down here right near the hill where we see two survivors working on the generator there. Saint's gonna oh sorry, Phantom. It's going to be able to get a basement hook here to start the trial and then get a Hall of Brian kick onto that gen. No pop goes the weasel available, unfortunately, but gen number one has come through and we see our survivors do want to get rid of this mid gen as quickly as possible. And you can hear there's quite a bit of progress on that. Able to catch Ada, though, moving their way on down. Should be able to get the save here, but basically just going to be a trade for a basement hook. And don't need to be able to pursue this chase. Just go ahead and take this trade here. The question is, do we still have people attacking that generator that we push survivors off of on this pride rock? You can hear this thing's a rock and not quite ready to get to popping, but it's pretty darn close. No pop, as you had mentioned. So only call of Brian to be able to regress it a little bit. The good news for Phantom is you do have the ability to kind of monitor this gen while you also are able to monitor your basement. But... Man, right now the survivors got to find a way to be able to get the reset, got to be able to get the save, and get some progress in some of these other gens. Oy, well, no oy, oy. That's a tough pallet to win. I think it was pretty obvious that we were seeing that deliverance coming out from Kana. That's really, really bad for Phantom as our other two healthy survivors are available to be working on gens right now. We are taking the chase onto Saint right now, who does go back towards the pallet, but doesn't actually go for the vault here. This will be hook stage number two onto Saint, and this is exactly who Phantom wants to be finding right now. They do manage to get that hill gen complete, however, which will be good for Neon in the long run, but losing Saint is the number one threat to Neon right now. And the other thing right now is you can see Phantom does still have a little nice little three gen kind of set up where this hook is at. The only problem is this generator already passed that 50% marker, a little bit closer to that 75. So, I mean, Phantom definitely going to be the feeling the pressure here, at least as far as at this point. But you still have Kana who is broken. If you happen to find them, that could be a relatively quick chase. Although you wouldn't mind putting pressure onto either of these other healthy survivors as well. I do believe that was one of our healthy survivors that we were talking about. We see, yeah, actually moving in for the save. That's going to be Mark here taking that first hit. But that does mean Phantom needs to start this tunnel out process, needs to get it done quickly. <gasps> Wait, Bam wow. actually came in and got the four of the people out on to Saint and manages to vault just in time this could be exactly what neon needs to keep this trial going saint is the only one who's dead hook and the only one who's healthy as of right now now it is scary to have so many injured survivors against a spirit but phantom getting a little bit lost with the tracking here bam uses the dead heart a little too early phantom coming out of phase a little bit of a distance away from where bam was and uh, just uh, having a look around see if there's anyone nearby before Going for the pick, sort of humming and arm between going back to that gen that already had so much progress, which would actually break up the three gen. So understandably so, Phantom does have to back. 
Yeah, really tough position to be in because, of course, that does potentially allow for a pickup across the way. Good call, though, as you can see, a lot of progress on this gen. But even with the amount of progress on this generator here, that's going to be a fourth gen getting popped across the way. And now we have been able to find our way back over here by the tractor. They are going to have Mark here. No pallet to be able to work with over in this side. This is a dead area of the map, so it's going to inevitably be a down. The question becomes, where is Saint? That's your fully healthy survivor. Maybe potentially already tackling that gen all the way across the way, which I don't know Phantom would be able to get back over there in time if that's the case. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to think the same thing here with UQ. And we do have a lot of injured survivors as well that are potentially going to get this gen completed. And I think we might be seeing adrenaline onto Mark as we don't see it on any of the other survivors. But with Saint getting caught here and Noed being in play, all gens are done. Saint is going to go down, but he does have from earlier though, is going to be able to last a bit longer and have the Noed totem being calmed out to the team here. Not gonna go down here phantom needs to drop this chase and find a fresh survivor here i believe canna is the uh he's already been hooked once but still two extra stages can be awarded for getting this down onto canna here who was found on the door but does pop locker and will get grabbed here and this should be a three out for neon with six stages for phantom yeah, and it'd be absolutely huge because we do actually have bam who is still yet to be hooked that would be a fresh hook out the door here for the side of Neon. And there they are, one, two, and three out the door. Plenty of stages still left on the board. Mark was uh, was only hooked once, so that's six stages leaving the trial here. It's going to be a tall task for the survivors for Blacklist here. I know they fought hard on the comeback to get this far, but we did see a really good job by the survivors of Neon in this last trial. Yeah, now we we know how capable Blacklist survivors are against the strongest of killers. If we get a repeat of what we saw in the blind set, this might be just enough for Blacklist to secure the win. But a win con of three fresh hooks acquired, six stages total. This is definitely doable for Neon on the Spirit. So we're going to be loading into our final trial for the series. If we're not including uh, what we've got going on next week with the... um with the games between a cat jam and um the other team i'm sorry but we'll be back with you right after this very short break all right let's go ahead and take another trip on back into the fog game number 10 wrapping up our fifth set here in the grand final going to be going back to the wreckers yard for some spirit action and uh it all comes down to this spoker how are you feeling Ed, in this last one Look, I tell you what, it has been a long night with the uh, Academy Finals and now the uh, Div 1 Finals, but I am feeling amazing going into this last game, knowing that everything has come down to this exact moment where we're going to be seeing Saint on the Spirit for Neon, knowing that the win condition is we saw Phantom getting three fresh hooks, six stages total, that is the score to beat for Saint. So we'll have to see how this goes as Joshi is going to be taking the first chase here with a nice sprint burst to kick things off. We'll get tagged Ooh. here. Not the nicest tile to really be playing around with right now, but we'll be able to utilize going back into the corrupt side of the map here and have a very safe pallet to use here. Now, is Joshi going to path back around to this pallet here or is he going to get down? Oh, nice! I don't even know where Joshi went there, but it's able to last a nice bit longer in chase. Yeah, and this first chase is going to be very, very important. We know that Blacklist needs to be able to get uh, quite a few stages out the door here. So this first chase, especially after that first tag, this this prolonged chase going to be good news. You get to this other pallet here as well. That's an additional resource that you can use while your other three survivors are working on those gems because this chase currently is getting moved over towards the corrupt side of the map. 75 seconds here now into this trial, really needing to be able to establish it down. There it is as it comes in now. But the question is, have you maybe potentially given up a little bit too much pressure onto those generators? I think this first chase from Joshi here is just that perfect amount of time that by the time we do hear a lot of progress 
on this gen, not too far away from the hook here, but it is that sort of sweet spot of the time it takes for a survivor to rotate onto a gen at the start of the game and get that full 80 seconds worth of progress through. So we should at least be seeing gen number one and maybe gen number two coming through but with this gen with a lot of progress being so close to where the hook is we have the firecracker coming out bassy unable to get the blind will be getting a one for one here as we do see the first two gens getting done here i'd have to hope that bassy is the deliverance player yeah, we're definitely going to have to pay attention to that. I would imagine if we see these survivors get out of dodge, that's going to be a good indication that that's going to be the case. You'd mentioned the two gens getting done. That's going to be huge here as far as from the side of Blacklist. There's that broken status as we see uh, Bazzy getting off the hook. We can only help but assume that that was Bazzy helping themselves up <gasps> off of the hook here. But you are able to find the injured survivor. This is huge. Yeah, this is actually insane for Saint because we know that there was a gen with a decent amount of progress that is probably getting eaten away by this pain resonance that's coming into play if we are getting these survivors to scourge hooks are probably delaying gen number three before Saint can get back over and make sure that that doesn't happen. We do hear that it still has a fairly decent amount of progress with someone actively working on it here, but not quite enough to get it completed and with a lot of resources already being used at this part of the map insane stuff from beanie here is going to be able to make it all the way back over to this bus but it does have a pretty desolate side of wrecker's yard to deal with yeah, we got to remember that first chase took place over here. So quite a few of the resources are down over here. There's not going to be much to work with as that's going to be another down here. That's also going to be another fresh hook here as well. That's absolutely huge. Going to be able to continue to stack those things up. If you can find that last fresh hook, that would be big because we do have to remember that BAM was never hooked in our last trial. We're still sitting at three gens needing to be done. We know that gen closest to the hook is the gen that had the most progress as we did see it was affected by that pain resonance, which means now the pressure really starting to get turned up on the side of Blacklist. It's nice that we see a nice quick unhook on Tabini here, but this pain res I think might be what is saving the game for Saint right now, being able to get that extra regression. And we have this chase going back onto Bassi, who doesn't drop the pallet, plays it greedy, and is going to pay the price for it. This is going to be hook stage number two onto Bassi, but that would mean that we have acquired a total of, I think, five stages as we're sitting right now with still three gens needing to get done. Yeah, this is a really good job. Nice pace that we are seeing here from our spirit player. Knowing the wind condition coming out here, really putting that foot down to the pedal and not letting up. You can hear this generator over here. It has a whole bunch of progress, but you also have a survivor over here that you could be able to take chase with. We're going to go ahead and see entering into the phase walk. Saint going to be looking to try and get at least the first health state change. There it is. Comes across on to Beanie. We also have to remember that Beanie's already been hooked. Another second stage wouldn't be the worst of things here for Saint, but who you would really like to find right now would be the Michaela Boosted. But you know what? We see a down coming in as the unhook's coming in across the way. That means our survivors aren't going to be able to get cracking on these generators, especially because we know that uh, we had our Nancy that was over here trying to set up for a potential save. That's another hook stage. We're at six of them things right now, Spoker. This is really, really not looking good for Blacklist. A beautiful stun, though, from Josh. He gets done, stupid. But uh, I'm, I'm really worried for Blacklist. But right now, already six stages have been met and things aren't looking good for Joshi right now. Taking Chase back to the same area as we saw before. This tile not having a very safe pallet, I would say, and not really having anywhere to go to here. I'm not sure if Joshi is going to make it to this pallet here. Surely should, though. The same face is around it wow. and Joshi drops on the opposite side. And with this hook onto Joshi, I think it's been set in stone here. We have... Your winners of Division 1 being Neon. Wow, that was huge. I gotta say, I was starting to worry a little bit on the side of Neon. We had seen that they had had so much momentum and it looked like Blacklist had done a great job of seizing control and flipping the script. 
But instead, we see Bazzi going to be going down over here as well. And I think Saint not going to be worried about just the simple condition. Looking to really prove a point in trial number 10 here. This is going to be another hook. This is going to be another sacrifice as well. We're now in a 2v1. And now it's just a matter of time before we happen to finally come to a conclusion. And like you said, crown Neon the champions. I was saying it earlier, but I, I genuinely just have to reiterate the fact that Pain Residence, I think, is the number one perk that won the game for Saint and for Neon here by just getting those little regressions here and there with each hook state being acquired. Blacklist obviously going for that very aggressive playstyle with getting quick unhooks and obviously getting resets fairly quick out of the way as well with no sloppy butcher coming into effect, but we see... Gen number three getting completed, but there's nothing that Blacklist can really do at this point. Unfortunately, they fought so valiantly to get to this point in the finals, but Neon has just gone to prove that they are, I guess, the best of the best here. Yeah, we're able to fight and he's able to fight back through the lower bracket as well to be able to get to this point. And I mean, again, took really good control of this series early. There was that little bit of a hiccup in game or a series sets three and four. But when you have two teams that are so tightly contested like this, you can't really blame them. There's going to be that notification that does give Saint the location of boosted here going to be slugging for the 4K. Oh, my goodness gracious. But you can't really can't blame them here wanting to really prove a point. And when you have that information, you might as well just go for it all. Right. Oh, 100 percent at this point in the game there's really oh uh, never mind there is something that can be done obviously we don't have the window there boost on the fun bus I'm, but we see unbreakable coming out from beanie across the ways here now with the way that um that slugs don't uh, sorry bleed outs don't award uh, do award full points to the killer here you haven't really been seeing as many people running unbreakable as what we'd used to be seeing, especially against the strongest of killers here, obviously opting for different perk choices here. But as balancing changes over time here, we get that slug onto boosted. However, we just need to find Beanie, but it's it's crazy to see probably for the first time in a while that I've seen an unbreakable getting pulled off. And it comes off, but unfortunately, you know, to, to no avail, right? It really just ends up delaying the inevitable here. Now, you know, as far as if you're a saint, you can just go ahead and continue to commit to this chase. No more unbreakable to worry about. You know the location, at least roundabouts of where the slug initially was. The other good news for you is once you finish this down, you know where the hatch is going to be at, right? This is Wrecker's Yard. And very impressively, the 4K before a fourth Gen complete Saint really looking impressive here in the grand final. Now with Beanie being dead hooked though, I'm sure that Saint is going to be able to phase over to the hatch in time and we do not see boosted going for it there. Oh. They are. How unfortunate. Let's see if there's an adrenaline though. Oh no. This is so sad, but I've been hearing a lot recently actually that's at this current point in time in DVD, the survivor that's slugged on the floor would actually get a priority to the hatch escape over the killer. So, interesting thing to note, but unfortunately not going to be coming into effect here as Boosted is going to go up on the hook and will be eliminated. Now, not only is winning the grand finals just such a spectacular thing in itself, but doing it with such an impressive result, getting that 4K with only two gens remaining is definitely something to be gloating and bragging about so i know saint is definitely going to be super happy with that but that was the final game of the division one series where we will officially be crowning neon as the winners coming up from the losers bracket beating exodus beating everyone else to get to this point such a close series it was, and to see Neon taking the dub, I know, is a very, very happy sight for a lot of people.